Okay, here we are. Happy New Year, soon to be 2017. Old Anxiety, whatever the fuck that means. Old Anxiety. Whoop-de-doo. Uh, Whoop-de-doo. Heaven help us all. Boo. Heaven help help us all in 2017. If you thought 2016, excuse me, I must dress appropriately for was bad for yeah. this uh, special holiday show we're doing here all right because we we are collectively the kings of internet progressive talk radio because we we do not get all uh, bubbly and effervescent and uh, 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 like uh, like a sank on uh, the Young Turks and that little chicky poo that talks fast, or or a lot of the or or Debbie from the same progressives, you know, me very melodramatic, and they had they get all cutesy pie and you know uh, the the other guys the other guy I like Mr. Cousins of the Ring of Fire. The ball had it with the round down in a burning, burning ring, ring of fire. fire. It went down, 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 and, and the flames flame went up went higher. higher. And it burned, 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 burn. the ring of fire. Uh, the ring of fire. <laughs> That's my Johnny Cash. The ring of fire. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I digress. Yeah, yeah, if you thought 2016 was the largest insane asylum. That ever existed. Wait until 2017 after uh, Trump gets inaugurated and and a few people show up to entertain. And uh, that what they they forced the rockets or they said three of the rockets perform or you lose your job. Yeah, the boss does not. Uh, well, the boss is a as a an elite must be an elitist kiss ass. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, oh, seven bells for our holiday special. Progressive discussions. Also to ring in the new year, but the new year is not here yet because it is New Year's Eve. Now, uh, as you can see, you jabronis, this is a grass, grassroots revolution style talk show. We do not We do not have uh, George Jetson state of the art expensive studio here. But we're, we're all about content. 
All right. That being said, I was thinking uh, of um, the, a blame, a kind of a blame game uh, uh, debate in my head about who is really to blame. Well, I went through down the line. Oh boy! You have uh, uh, the the corporate controlled mainstream media, but then again. They don't want to lose their high-paying jobs, so they they take and their, access. they take their marching orders. So they blurt out what the oligarch wants you to hear. Of course, you're not hearing the real hard-hitting truth on mainstream media. You hear you're hearing uh, many lies, and you're hearing uh, you're not hearing many things that have taken place in the world and in the U.S. that are important. They're withholding the truth, but like I said before, they don't want to get fired. And when uh, when they do, like for instance, uh, Chris Matthews of MSNBC, right? He had Trumpy on there, you know, with the um, quizzing him about uh, would you would you uh, if a woman had an abortion, would you want to punish her in some way, shape, or form? And he couldn't answer, of course. He had never thought the whole thing through. Well, he kind of put the 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 wall down uh, south of the border on on the back burner. Well, he put yeah, the but wall the point is, it. he he doesn't think about these things, and now he he got uh, questioned, and then uh, uh, he won't come back on the show. See, so you lose your access well, when you, you do that. You blurt out uh, the truth. You well, when they campaign, they especially Donald Trump, he blurted out many things. Believe me, yeah, and, then, the and then and then he made his uh, cabinet appoint appoint appointments no appointees appointees that are totally the opposite of his campaign promises. Correct. And and don't forget, Trump is not a politician, and he still did, pulled the politician routine of telling you what you want to hear. Now, getting back to mainstream media, yes, they don't want to get fired. Uh, now, yeah. or should we blame? the uh, imbecilic numbskull uh, Americans, some, some time, uh, some of it, yes, a certain percentage, yes. Yes, there are, there are many uh, brainiacs that have uh, apathy around election time. There are many, you know, they don't vote at all. There are many um, uh, former, uh, very frustrated, very heartbroken former uh, Bernie Kratz that probably didn't bother to vote. Or the some insane uh, uh, sellout ones that voted for Hillary Clinton. Uh, then you have the uh, the inbred uh, brain cell deficient evangelical rednecks who live in a shack and uh, they vote Republican, okay, or they vote their their cult religion. I think it's more the cult. You have them, but overall, overall, when when the little guy, Democrats, liberals, uh, 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 progressives, whatever you want to call them, collectively, when the little schmuck votes, the Republicans lose. Period. When, when, when the little guy gets out and cares enough to vote, the Republicans will always lose because of the, the mass. The they masses the numbers. that get out there, right. Now, this is providing you have a fair election and you don't get fucked by the Electoral College, which has happened, which is the second screw job, screw job that happened in 2016. First screw job was the rigged uh, primaries hmm. and the DNC. What they did, Wasserman Schultz, Schitz, Wasserman Schitz. And second is the Electoral College uh not giving the popular vote winner the victory. Now, you can blame the people because despite the numbskulls that are out there, the idiots, everyone who goes online has access to all opinions. It's in your face. You know, you, you, you hear about just about everything from everybody. Um, Even the fake. Yeah, the fake, the real, the um, um, 
Even the truth about Christianity is, is online. I mean, it's all online. And, and you know, and, and what about your gut feeling? What about, what about your, your, your hunch, the little voice inside of you that tells you, you know what? As Sherlock Holmes' deductive reasoning, something's fishy about this candidate. Something don't set right with me. You know, because you got to really look at their, don't look at what they tell you at the rally. Look at their record, too. You got to weigh things out. But people, people have access to all sorts of information. So it's not like you don't have the information, the American uh, mainstream. You do have the information. But there are many that are just downright uh, 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 born stupid. Or not they want to play Angry Birds or Candy Crush. Right. Well, and then there are those that want to blame all their problems on immigrants of color or people of color in general, like the ones down south and out west. And that's been around for a long time. Your evangelicals, your, um, your states, uh, I guess you would say Texas, uh, North Carolina, y your states that want that want the poor to just uh, drop dead if you don't have any money. <clears throat> I just, I'm gonna cut to the chase. That's pretty much what it is. So some asshole on Fox News was saying that, uh, I know I, I'm sounding harsh, but everyone has to start being responsible for themselves. Yeah. What a douchebag. Well, are you gonna give them all a piece of land to be able to do that? I, I, bet, I bet the guy who said that on Fox News had breaks in life. I bet he's financially independent. Well, he wouldn't talk like that otherwise. Because if he wasn't financially independent, he wouldn't be saying, making statements like that. And he probably used uh, the safety net to get where he is today. Like Rush Limbaugh. He uh, was unemployed once. Well, doctor... Uh, and used unemployment insurance. Who's a neurosurgeon? Dr. Ben Carlson? Ben Carson. Dr. Ben yes, Carson he grew used, up... Uh, he, right. he doesn't really uh, uh, mention it too much but you know yes, I mean, he used all those uh, to get where he is today. But that he bashes now yeah exactly interesting um, exactly the, the hypocrites uh, uh, I believe that uh, Ryan has done so also Paul Ryan that's correct yes um, Sarah Palin <laughs> Made us, uh, not, I mean, not Sarah Palin, uh, Bristol Palin. Bristol. I know the baby. Made, a, the made a, uh, a statement, um, uh, you know, about morality or whatever. Oh, I mean, geez. she got knocked up out of wedlock twice, and she's. Three she, times. And they, well, paid, not out of and they paid her $250,000 to preach abstinence. You know, but she made a ridiculous statement. Uh, 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 you know, a right-wing, uh, moralistic, judgmental statement, you know, uh, uh, she's in no position to make any statements of, of that nature. You know, it's totally... Uh, but they do. Preposterous. <laughs> they do. Oh, my God. Uh, it's incredible. Now, you know, so you can blame... You can blame uh, a little of uh, every uh, source for the Trump victory, or you can flat out do what I do. I, I, I blame Jeff Weaver and uh, Bernie Sanders for Trump's victory. And yeah, but you can, also, you can also blame the Democratic candidate. Hillary was, well, she was despoiled. Well, Hillary... She was not the correct candidate. Well, she's, okay. the, she's the one the DNC chose. It's exactly right. And the primary chose. But the point was... And that could have been the disaster of the party itself. That's correct. And But she was a, a spoiled candidate. Tar she was very tarnished. tarnished. Yes. Very tarnished. And that, that stuff was uh, hard to get over. And, and, and uh, that gave Donald Trump all the material he needed. Mm -hmm. To, to hammer her like a woodpecker on a tree. Because under what, normal circumstances, all those things that he got away with during the campaign, with them grabbing women's pussies and all the lost, other shit, yeah. uh, he would have lost. Any normal... Look what they... Gary Hart. Look, go back and look at these other candidates who did what? 
nothing compared to what Trumpy did. But yeah, like like if Donald Trump ran against a Democrat with an with an untarnished record, squeaky clean, untarnished record, yeah, a very well liked and very well respected Democrat, Trump would have would have lost Early by, on, by a landslide. Yes. Bernie Sanders was ahead of Donald Trump in the double digits in the polls. But see, the thing is that Bernie Sanders, he had the momentum of the grassroots revolution. Yeah. But once he, once he, it's not that he lost the nomination because we, we, we knew the DNC was going to nominate Hillary Clinton. Right. Uh, um, um, primary rigging or not. You knew the DNC was not going to nominate the Democratic Socialist. No. So, that said, mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders already had his legions and his fans and his following. If Bernie Sanders would have not endorsed Hillary Clinton and went to the Green Party with Jill Stein or, or ran as an independent, it would have been... Bernie Sanders most likely that would have won the election because he had the massive he had a snowball effect he had he had, he had the steam rolling uh, and he was a better candidate he had the masses behind him because of the people who showed up at his rallies he was on a roll the moment the momentum was astronomical but once he he broke the hearts of his legions by endorsing Hillary Clinton then the grassroots revolution disintegrated. So then when Jill Stein tried to pick up the pieces of whatever was left of the grassroots revolution, she didn't have much left to work with. No, and Jill Stein really got uh, the, uh, the, uh, the hook. I mean, she, she got no publicity at no. all. Now, Jill, now, see, Jill Stein, Dr. Jill Stein is... Um, She's a good egg. I've listened to her speak. She's definitely qualified, and she's definitely highly intelligent. But the problem is, is I don't know. Every time I look, I watch one of her live stream rallies. It looked like a throwback to Woodstock. It was very hipster. It was. It was kind of a turnoff. And I don't know. If people say he's a great guy. I don't know he, her vice presidential pick from Adam, Mr. Baraka. Like the, look, this country is not going to vote for another Baraka. I'm telling you right now. He, he was a little too ethnic and a little too familiar. They voted for one in Newark for mayor. Oh, really? Baraka. Well, you know, Newark votes race. Newark votes race just like Harlem votes for Charlie Rangel. Hey, Charlie Rangel is gone, gone, he gone, retired? gone, gone. He gone, retired? Gone. Yeah, he bought a, a mansion in the Dominican Republic yeah, with tax money. He's really tax, down there on the on the beach, like a, a beach whale. With tax money. <laughs> no, but he ran up against, I think, a, a, Lat, a Latino man, and uh, of course he won because of color. You know, and uh, forget about all this unity and blah, 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 kumbaya. It's not going to happen. There are people who think unity, and there are people who just want to stay with their own culture and their own kind and think that their people are the best. Hey, I've talked to Greeks who think they're they're the best, and the and the universe revolves around Greece. I I talk to Italians that feel the same way about them. <coughs> Every you know everybody says they're the best, just like everybody thinks that er, er, people from the Bible were 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 them were there were them. Hey, I got news for you. On Facebook, this black girl posted an image which she claimed is the oldest known image of Jesus and his disciples, and they hey. were all black, hey. like it was Photoshop. And I asked uh, uh, Michael Gorman, who had shared the, um, the banner, I, I says, look, here's the website to the museum that supposedly has, I think it was called the, um, the Cairo or something. I, I, gave him the, I found the website. He says, right now, I'm, 
I'm sleepy as all hell. I'm going to bed. You take a look when you have free time. He took a look. He couldn't find the image. So, you know, yeah. so there Fake are people. So that was politically correct crap. Fake news. That was crap. That was like that was like when I walked one time for some reason. I was in a, a, a black Baptist church in Patterson, and all the photos of Jesus. He was all he was black. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, George Jefferson's. Uh, brother-in-law or whatever on, on uh, all in the family he insisted God was black you know uh, uh, the Vatican all, all the uh, Renaissance artists painted everybody in the Bible including Jesus as very light-skinned light-haired blue-eyed Caucasians so everybody thinks their people is number and one feminist thinks uh, God is a sheep Right, the feminists, yeah, the feminists, uh, they have a sin. So what I'm trying to say is people, whether they be feminists or lesbian, whether they be gay or straight, whether they be one race or another, everybody thinks that their people, God cares about their people, and God looks like them. So, you know, the arrogance, like uh, I was talking to William H. Morrow, our announcer, I was talking to him about the. We were talking about the arrogance of a Tim Tebow, thinking that God was just singling out his team. He was playing for the Denver Broncos at that time. God just cares about Tim Tebow, the quarterback, and the Denver Broncos. That doesn't care about any of the other teams or anything that's going on in the universe. But God wants Tim Tebow and the Broncos to win because Tim Tebow decided to kneel down in the middle of the field in prayer and subject the whole stadium to his uh, born-again uh, evangelicalism. Well, you know? God would tell him to go into his closet, kneel down. Well, is that kind of vain? Isn't that vanity, though? Absolutely. It's drawing to, attention to number one, me. It's like, I, say, it's, I, like I. it's like saying somebody praying to God for something trivial, like, eh, baby needs new shoes. Who the hell cares? Your, your kid is one of billions on the, on the earth. A lot of them are starving to death in, in, in third world countries, and, and your baby needs new shoes. I'm telling you, the, there's something about these right-wing, evangelical, born-again cultists that they're very arrogant, they're very sanctimonious, and they think that they could be bothering the Almighty God for every stupid, imaginable reason. Well, they don't understand that God cut Himself off from them. Mm -hmm. So you can't bother Him. He must draw you to Him. Right. He must draw you. You cannot come of your own volition. You are selected. You are selected. As Jeremiah and uh, John the Baptist were selected in the womb, all, all the heavy destined, all the heavy hitters from the Old Testament were selected. They had a job. They got a job to do. In other words, it's like it's like somebody sitting at home waiting for the phone ring because they're on call. They're on call. They might get a call for a job. A, a temp job. God wants wanted this particular person to go on a temp assignment for him. I'm, I'm speaking in layman's terms because I know a lot of you people don't understand intellectual matters. And several people that were called, they didn't want to continue with it, such as Moses and uh, Jonah. Well, and uh, God said, uh, you know, no. Uh, Got to do it. Well, I can understand Moses getting fed up because. Well, Moses, Moses had a. Uh, he couldn't speak well. He, he had a stutter, and Aaron had to do most of his yeah. I mean, Moses. No wonder, no wonder the Israelites didn't take him seriously. Well, they turned their back on 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 the Ten Commandments, and uh, and he just got. He just probably threw his hands up in the air. And according to Hollywood, he threw the tablets at him, and they exploded. But. I don't think that's true because wasn't it the tablets that went inside the Ark of the Covenant? Well, yeah, but uh, that's when they, they got they, manna from heaven to, to eat in the desert. God rewrote them. Yeah, 
and what God can do yeah, just about well. anything he wants to do. So, um, um, oh yeah, my new period, pyramids made out of solid red jasper. The walls of New Jerusalem and God's throne is going to be made out of jasper, my friend. It's going to be made out of many, many gems. The Bible said the wall and the throne is jasper, and I read the history of jasper. Jasper is a very special stone, and I got it as the great energy generating pyramid. And my pyramids are the best, brother. All right, anyway, um, seven bells for my pyramids. I think it's as seen on the web too. Anyway. I don't want to digress too much. Oh, all you have to do is read the, read the end of Revelation and it'll show you how many gems are going to be used. Oh, there's a whole, there's a whole heap and helping of gems. And the gold. And there's going to be so much light coming from that city that the, you, you wouldn't need the sun to illuminate the world. No, because God and, uh, and Jesus, you're going to be lit up, baby. You're going to be lit up, baby. It's not going to be no... Uh, no uh, emaciated, uh, spaced out, uh, pot smoking, uh, glassy eyed hipster Jesus like Hollywood made him out to be. The new, the new Jerusalem will be 1,500 miles long, wide, and tall. Okay. Ancient, ancient aliens said on uh, there is no, he says most likely Noah's Ark contained the DNA of all earthly creatures because there's no way you can fit two of every, of every animal on the Ark according to the size that was depicted. Well, yeah, many, many probably were eggs. Could have been DNA, you know. Many were eggs. You know. Anyway, uh, getting back to the old blame game. Uh, I would say yes, uh, Bernie Sanders, Jeff Weaver, at that time, the day after the Democratic um, Convention, Convention, the day after, they could have very easily took, took all those legions of people and said, look, we're running as independents or we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're going by uh, Jill Stein and the Green Party. They could have done that. But they didn't do it. So Bert, what Bernie did was he did what Elizabeth Warren and the, all the rest of them did, and he uh, endorsed Hillary Clinton, thinking, for some reason, that those legions were not going to uh, follow him to the Green Party. I don't know what went through Bernie Sanders' mind. I don't know what happened behind closed doors. I have no idea. I mean, well, Bernie always said that. No idea. The revolution was not about him. It's about the people. Well, it kind of... And if you don't have the people behind you, ain't got a revolution. Yeah, but the wind behind those sails of the yeah. revolution, the wind kind of like died down a lot. Well, yeah. He had the wind blowing hard up against his sails. But as soon as he... Not that he lost the, 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 the convention, I mean the nomination, but when he endorsed Hillary, Forget it. That took all the wind out of his sails, and the people were pissed as hell, and and disappointed, and heartbroken, and they dispersed. I think some of them just stood home. Well, uh, those who wanted real change, obviously, you know. A few of them went to stand. They didn't get it. Many of them didn't vote. Many of them gave up because they thought, you know, Bernie sold out, and uh, and then of course Trump says. All you former Bernie Krats, come to Papa. Come to me. Come to me. I'll take good care of you. Suffer the little children to come on to me. I will teach you the fine art of coochie grabbing. Yeah. Yeah. Remember when Arnold? Uh, actually, that wasn't true. When Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger is taking the place of uh, Trump. Yeah, on the uh, apprentice. He is the new. You are fired. fired. Yes. You you are fired. And he has said, "You will see 
who is the boss. And you, and uh, yeah, and you because will, Trump you will has, not come back. Trump still has an executive producer hand in it. Oh God, here we go with the conflicts of interest. Yeah, well. See, this is going to yeah. be a Republican. Big problem. A Republican said that when he takes the oath. He's already technically guilty of not only violating the Constitution, but uh, of a treasonous act. He's got to do something. He, he has it. way too many conflicts of interest. Mm -hmm. And and what's the deal with Trump Tower now? He's charging the government rent right out for the for the uh, Secret Service to be in right Trump out, Tower, baby. So they're not there rent free. Hell no! But it's not it's not the taxpayers' fault that uh, millennia, malaria, m millennia, m Milani, Melania, and the kids want to stay in Trump Tower. Why should the taxpayers uh, uh, be penalized for, for that? They're supposed to live in the White House. They're going to try to change a lot of shit, those Republicans. You can't, like, I mean, you're Even supposed to be presidential. That's it. Didn't he know what he was taking on when he ran for president? Yeah, but I believe he did not think he was ever going to win. Well, it seems like Republicans... They don't do the stuff he did. It seems like re do. Republicans don't think long term. Well, they don't. They don't think things through. They don't. So They're going to replace Obamacare, but they ain't got nothing to replace it with. Yeah, I just want to say that uh, it might not happen on this show, but he told me for sure it's going to start on the next show is uh, we will be having a monologue uh, from one of our team members and, and, and our number one uh, uh, Facebook group administrator and um, our Facebook page, um, I believe uh, editor or moderator, I think editor, Mr. Saj Boyle will be uh, doing his uh, little monologue that will be uh, will be aired during our break, during our lunch break. So a shout out to Sash Boyle. Happy New Year 2017 to you. And uh, oh, and a happy birthday to my very near dear friend uh, uh, with the love of uh, uh, a recent birthday. Uh, uh, Natalia Rodriguez of San Diego, California. Happy birthday to you, my dear. Okay, now. Natalia. Natalia Rodriguez. Um, Natalia. Very uh, be uh, beautiful Mexican uh, woman. Okay. Uh, it's her birthday, so. Um, and I had no idea because Facebook usually lets you know. Yes, they do. When it's somebody's birthday, you think they, they, there's a little pink icon of a birthday mm -hmm. cake. They didn't do that. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like uh, saw people posting happy birthday. And I'm like, what? It's a birthday? I didn't know that. So I made up a, a very attractive birthday banner for her. Uh, I dolled it up. I dolled it up good. Cool. I, I used a font style called quesadilla. Quesadilla. Because she's Mexican. And, uh, you want the quesadilla? And I put the symbol for Capricorn and the, the female symbol, you know, the upside down cross with the zero, with the circle. Put a heart, I put a <coughs> smiley face, and I put a queen's crown. All in oh, a, a yes. very vivid pink, like a magenta or a, or a fuchsia. I'm sorry, fuchsia. 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 A fuchsia. A fuchsia. I think well, magenta is a brighter pink. I held them side by side one time because I, I wanted to find out what pink is the hottest pink. Mm -hmm. And uh, my vote is, is magenta. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Fuchsia. I mean Fuchsia. Mm -hmm. Anyway, before I start drinking uh, high quality liquor tonight and, and having my uh, jumbo <laughs> shrimp and garlic sauce, because I, ain't, I am not cooking. I did enough of that for the other pagan holiday. Now we officially begin that was with fun. our New Year's Eve 2017 show. Let me see how much time we have. Half an hour.
Not that bad. Not uh -huh. doing bad on time. The king, the overall kings of internet progressive talk radio. King and I. We pull no punches. No holds Ow. barred. We're totally ad libbed. He didn't pull that punch, man. No, totally ad libbed. <laughs> No rehearsed, no rehearsal. Anything can happen. Any, anything can be said. We're naturally funny and witty. Um, and uh, to those that complain that James P. Madonna gets up from his chair too many times during the show, I have an itch in the middle of my forehead. So who's, I want to. I want to. I want to send you this. Uh, 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 they uh, New Year's. Somebody that told William H. Morrow a snitch. Was saying they told, was wait, belly wait, wait, aching. Wait, wait, they watched the whole show, and what they came away with was no, they didn't watch you the whole get show. Up from your, well, then how did they know you get up? No, tonight? well, they fucking nitpicked. Well, then you just dis 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 dispatch someone like that. They didn't watch the whole show, so they can watch fifteen minutes, and they said you get up from your chair too many times. How many times you get up I, in 15 minutes? I get up from my chair. We've been chair. a half an hour. You haven't gotten up once. I, ha I don't get up from my chair too many times. They said it was unprofessional. I get up from my chair because I have things to do yeah. that are important to the show. Yeah. And I also get up from my chair because I feel like it. You have a problem with that? I need more I tea. have a problem with the person. No, uh, Bill Morrow... <laughs> knows that we are very progressive and he's very much a right-wing corporatist and anti-union well, he say, he is not shy about criticizing what we are about okay well that covers all of his uh, his statements then. and 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 his put yeah, his put down yeah. statements right? thank you so they are worthless but he has no concrete evidence to back up his political Philosophy. Then you dispatch that, dispense with it. Which Period. happens to be okay. what right-wing people do. They don't that have correct. any concrete, hard evidence to back themselves that up. That is correct. And uh, they do eventually resort to name-calling. And cheating. Like, you people suck, your show sucks. And cheating, you know, they don't have, because they don't have any evidence. That's correct. And, uh, and then they try to uh, interrupt you and, and uh, talk you... Over talk you. Oh, they over talk you when they're they're debating. Um, you. and uh, and what else? That is uh, standard procedure. Yeah. Hey, look, you you can be in an industry, and you can have uh, either coworkers, associates, or people that are in the same network doing the same thing. That doesn't mean you have to like each other, love each other, or outside of the job, even get along. There were many Hollywood legends that worked with, uh, that had co-workers that they, they acted with that they hated each other. Mm -hmm. it, it, I was reading a, a list of over 30, and that was not all of them. You know, you can work together and you can be ambassadors to the cause and not necessarily be friends. Mm -hmm. outside of the cause you know uh, I, I have my clashes but you know me I, I what's the old saying you wear your emotions on your sleeve in other words it's like what uh, Gene Okerlund said about Jesse Ventura you knew what you get you knew what you got with Jesse he didn't backstab you he, he said it right to your face mm -hmm. he wasn't a two face so I, I admire that all right, anyway. Go. Why the white working class votes against itself? Yeah, you're right. Just like the poor, the poor folks in, uh, what is it, Wolf well, County, that's Kentucky. What that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Working class, so well. The column by Catherine Rample was spot on when she noted that Hillary Clinton's policies such as expansion of health insurance subsidies, educational aid, middle class tax cuts, and minimum wage increases would benefit the class, while Donald Trump's policies, such as scrapping Obamacare and tax cuts mainly for the wealthy, would not. 
Besides apparently not understanding this, some also failed to understand that Trump, aided by House Speaker Paul Ryan, would attempt to eliminate regulations that, among other things, have kept our air and water clean, saved us from predatory financial practices, and protected our health and safety on and off the job. Ryan's plan could possibly lead to severe restrictions or reductions in Social Security, yeah, they want Medicare to, and Medicaid. They want to steal the money that doesn't belong to them to begin with. That is because correct. Medicare and Social Security are not, and I repeat, not entitlements or any form of handout. Yeah, they are paid for. Right. Now, what the rich and their rich buddies up over in Congress, what they get is a handout, massive handout, welfare. Some also gave little thought to the severe danger of having an ill-informed and egomaniac, egomaniac excuse me, president during foreign and nuclear policy and deciding how to react to crises. As Rample noted, their vote was predicated on the same type of lack of understanding that caused a woman in an earlier campaign to plead that the candidate should keep the government away from my Medicare. Unfortunately, the ill-informed vote will also affect the health, the welfare, and security of the rest of us. Well, consider it money stolen um, and um, given to Wall Street. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that they can invest it in their schemes. Your tax dollars are being stolen. Your Social Security will be stolen. And, and you, you asked for it. You voted for it. You voted for it. You keep on reelecting these incumbents. You know, I mean, uh, uh, and allowing them to steal your tax dollars, thing, things that you have coming to you. Um, you know, I don't know where the Republicans are going to get all these jobs and careers from. <laughs> you know, like Ken Create told me, well, Donald Trump wants to bring all the jobs back to the United States and he wants everyone to work. All right, are we going to see th that many jobs? Well, to do that, you need to go to all of these towns and cities that had working businesses and uh, factories, and you have to start them all up again. Or you can say, you can say, where are you going to bring the job, the, the people back to do jobs? Or you can do this. You can you can give all the tax breaks. All the tax breaks to the to the small businesses only, only to Main Street, okay, and 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 stimulate the growth of small businesses on Main Street, and make the rich pay their fair share in taxes, and then when uh, the outsource job products come back to to the, to the to the United States, you tariff them, you tariff the hell out of their products. So now people are going to say, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I outsourced my company to Philippines and I'm giving them only 50 cents an hour, but this president, this new president, he's tariffing me too much. It's ch cheaper for me to go back to the United States and hire Americans. Well, you got to build and the that's factories. What happened. You got to build the factories and the businesses before you can hire anybody. Well, they're, okay. they're shipping them out. They're in Mexico, they're in China, you know. Yeah, like but Bernie Sanders you can't says. just bring them back. What are you going to bring them back? You're bringing back immigrants from over there. What would you do that for? They're they're importing H-1B immigrants. Oh, that's for different. That's, yeah. that's, that we need. Because uh, as far as science goes in this country, <laughs> our people know shit. Well, some companies must be using uh, really low-budget programmers to run their website. Like Facebook has so many glitches, 
every day, every day, glitches, glitches, glitches. So, I mean, look, if you have competent programmers, you're not going to have all those glitches. Come on, unless they don't, their servers, their, 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 the activity out, outgrew the, uh, the servers. Maybe the servers have to be increased. Okay. I heard the um, American side of the internet is uh, wants to move their service to Canada because Trump wants to start uh, clamping down on the internet, censoring, censoring the internet, and, and if they move their service to Canada, where they have Mr. Trudeau, a real progressive, then uh, you know they can give the Bronx cheer. Well, well. To the U.S. government, to Trump. We'll see if he's going to worry about that sort of. Thing. He's got more, more uh, problems facing him than than that. He's going to get. He's going to get bombarded with problems like right. a meteor shower. You know. He's going to get like, you know. Well, that's what they're doing now. They're behind closed doors, trying to, uh, to keep his conflicts of interest. But he better listen. He better listen to 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 the world's prominent scientists. Because you don't want to get to the point of uh, no return with the planet Earth. Well, we're all I, we're all I I think uh, two or three. We've already got the tipping points. Yeah, I mean, what, two or three. What do you what do you have like now? Uh, they predict that it, until um, like 2050 or 2060, a ten foot rise in sea levels. <laughs> There goes Florida, there goes Texas, there goes Louisiana, well, the, Alabama, well, the, co the coastal towns Georgia, and cities. North Carolina, South Carolina. You might as well call Miami the Venice, the yeah, Venice you, of you the United be. States. You will be. It will be Venezia. Yeah. It'll be it'll be a Cuban Venezia. And then you then then you'll see the uh, the guy going to gondo gondo gondolier. Gondolier, gondolier go. Hey, I already have the shirt. <laughs> you know what shirt I'm talking about. I'm talking about I, that that's an authentic French fisherman shirt from France. I have the shirt. I just need that hat. I I never liked the hat though. It looks like a cheap straw hat with a ribbon around it. The gondoliers wear the out that outfit. Yeah. You know, uh, striped horizontal striped shirt. Well, at one time, everybody who worked on the water had these freaking striped shirts. Somebody decided that horizontal stripes was to be connected to, to the sea. You know, like like somebody decided that... Did Popeye wear them? Tartar sauce was to go on fish. Huh? Did Popeye? Mayonnaise, relish, and lemon juice. Tartar sauce. Who thought of tartar sauce to go on fish? Popeye? Yeah, I did. No, he, he had a, a sailor or a shirt. Uh, now, he always wore the same shirt. I wonder if he ever washed it. No. Nah, olive oil didn't do Strike that. out the band for Popeye the Sailor. Okay. Da, da, da. Remember that song? Popeye the Sailor. Da, 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 da. All right, go ahead. I am a 70-year-old woman. Mm -hmm. Married 50 years. Wow. And wow. I hate my husband. When did she decide on this? Uh -oh. He wants to go to Wait. swinger parties. Oh, the old geezer wants to swing. Ugh, that's a horrible thought. And toss me to other men. Other, an old geezer, an old bag having a sex orgy. Oh, I got. I can't. I can't. The, the mental image is horrible. Ugh. I tried it a couple of times for him, and I hated it. What? A senior citizen's swingers sex orgy? No, they've been swinging for a lot of years. They've been married for 50. Come on. They didn't just start. Holy shit. So they're hardcore veterans. That's correct. At that game. My God. Unbelievable. He is overbearing and rude. But you, you want a nice guy that wants to swap you out? We don't have any friends where we live. Not even swinger friends. Ah, uh, that's the worst kind of friends. Well, nobody, nobody normal wants to be friends with. When this you are a, actually, when you are in a swinging profile, or etc., that is the tactic they use, and that it's social, no. and we're going to become great friends, and etc. They et think that, and it doesn't happen.
doesn't happen. So the emotional attachment to the people you're banging usually doesn't take place. No. Is it because it's hard to look each other in the eye and have a normal relationship after you screw them? <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'm not a swinger. She's not? I am not a swinger, I said. Oh, yeah, sure. Strike out the band for Papa. So he said. seeks out new people. He doesn't listen to my begging not to do this. His computer is full of porn, and his thoughts are sinful. Oh, oh now she's... Although... Now she's holy. He can't perform. So how's he gonna swing? He doesn't have enough lead in his pencil? His, his wood is... and his shillelagh is a little soft? That's right. He ain't, he ain't getting no woodies, man. No woody? Every day I wish he were dead. Maybe that's the secret to a long marriage. Hate each other's guts and don't don't talk to one another. <laughs> but I feel guilty for these thoughts. Please tell me what to do. My life is unbearable. Okay. This is uh, Dear Abby. Dear Abby. Answer. As uh, Archie Bunker would say, Abby. By now, it should be apparent to you that you can't change your husband. He yeah, might be able to change his erectile dysfunction, but not, not him. The only thing you can change is yourself. If you find the strength to do that, your circumstances will change. Because you say your life is unbearable, stop bearing it. Talk to a lawyer and set yourself free. How do you, how could you counsel such an abnormal, dysfunctional married couple and, exp and, and tell them, oh, you can make it work if they're a couple swingers? I don't know. My 33-year-old son has mental problems. This is a, another story? Okay. He is moving out to live with a guy he has been talking to on the internet. Oh. And who he has met only once. So this, this man is gay. They're both gay. They're both gay. His father and I are against it. Not because of their homosexuality, but because we are afraid it's a dangerous situation. Well, yeah. we have learned that the guy was arrested three years ago. For what? On three different charges. He says he was cleared, but refuses any background checks or fingerprinting for jobs and for government housing. Well, all criminals say they were framed. I used to see that on, uh, on old comedy shows and cartoons. I was framed! When we tried to talk to our son and explain the dangers, he became irate! <laughs> and blamed everything on us! Oh yeah, it's so easy to blame the parents for everything. He has no driver's license and th has threatened to take off. Take off, period. Go. He has threatened serious suicide. We have asked him to consider talking to a psychiatrist, but he refuses. That's how he plays his parents. He makes them feel guilty. He does see a psychologist every three months. And he's supposed to be on a medication, but he refuses to take it. Well, psychologists cannot prescribe. A psychiatrist can prescribe. How can we deal with this? His psychologist will not talk to us unless my son gives the okay. So he probably doesn't have the insurance coverage to see his shrink regularly. Because it doesn't sound like he sees the shrink that much. Dear Amy Vancer is, because your son is an adult, 
unless he is in a danger to himself or others, there is nothing, nothing you can do to prevent him from leaving. However, you can write his psychologist a letter letting him or her know what is going on and address your concerns. There is a chance your son might pay more attention to what his therapist says than to you. That's a good idea, writing, writing a letter to the, uh, to the shrink. It's also a good idea to do that and if possible foul play occurs in the future, you might have a cause for action against the psychologist. Well, it's uh, it's always good to um, cover your bases and uh, yeah. you know, like I always do, always try to think of all the what ifs. And cover your ass. I mean, uh, if they if they email the, the psychologist, they should definitely keep a copy of the email. But you know, think about email; it's dated. It's dated. Then if you get a reply, you save that too, in a file, like I have. I have all different files for every important purpose. An organization that may be of help to you is the National Alliance on Mental Illness, accessible at NAMI.org. It may also be able to provide you with the guidance and emotional support you need. Um, when we go to break, you're going to see a, a long banner on a, on, a, on, a, on a statement. Well, a whole bunch of statements that Jesse Ventura made. And, and he, it's fantastic. It's unbelievable. You just hit the pause button. When we go on break, don't forget, hit the pause button, read and learn. Right. And then we go on break for promo, but there's a, a lot of uh, educational things that you occasionally will see. Yes. Rewarding the rich is not tax reform. No, hell no. Next year, when the 115th Congress opens, Republicans are proposing to radically calling it tax reform. The Republicans promised the ability for the tax code to fit on a postcard. Every analysis I have read, conservative, liberal, and independent, indicates that almost all the benefits of the tax cuts would go to the very richest Americans. According to the Nonpartisan Tax Policy Center, 99.6% of the proposed tax cuts would go to the wealthiest 1%. Talk about rigs. An average annual saving of $240,000 per household. I could never for the life of me understand how a multi, multi billionaire old geezer with possibly one foot on a banana peel and one foot in the grave would be, will still be greedy and never have enough money. I can never understand that. Given these figures, I respectfully call on my representative Rodney P. of Freeland Eisen, a Republican. Yeah, to explain his support for this proposal. Yeah, he got paid off. That's, that's the reason why. Why do the richest people need more money? That's what I said. That's what I say every week. That's what I say every week. I ask him to spell out exactly how such enormous tax cuts for the super wealthy will create jobs. I cannot connect the dot. Trickle down doesn't work. At some time, 
this small number of people with the most money don't keep spending it. They stockpile it. If job growth is the goal, more should go to average Americans because they will spend it on goods and services. Hey, this is a, this is a brilliant uh, reading. Money will continue to work to grow the economy and create jobs. More tax cuts for the richest at the expense of everyone else is not reform, no matter how you market it. We don't need postcard tax returns. We need fairer, economically sound tax policies. Yeah, well, the money keeps on pooling at the top and, and, and doesn't even drift down. That's if the jobs are in the United States. It, it, it's not allowed to work. You know, uh, 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 and companies are not legally obligated, unfortunately, to share their, com their company's prosperity. CEOs will tell you this. They're not obligated to share their company's prosperity with their employees, so that, that it debunks trickle-down economics right there. So anyway, how are we doing on time? One more. One more, all right. Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. Terry Boulea. Could have used his signature leg drop on thieves who stole a delivery from the front porch of his Florida mansion. Oh, God. You know he curses the day he chose that finishing move? That's how he messed his back up uh -huh. so bad. Lake truck. Clearwater police. It's near Tampa, Florida. Released a video Friday showing four women pull into the driveway of the former pro wrestling champion's mansion last weekend. Three rush up the steps pick up the package, but apparently startled by a noise, they drop it and run back to their car. You would think he would have the, the, the best state-of-the-art uh, motion detection alarm system and all that stuff. After a few seconds, three run back up the steps, open the package, and remove the contents and flee. Hulk Hogan needs to get uh, a couple of very hulking Rottweiler dogs <laughs> or Bull Mastiff or something. Let Release the hounds! The uh, hounds of the basketball. Release the hounds! Alright, listen. We're gonna go to break. We're gonna go to promo. Cool. Feel free to hit the pause button, read and learn of all the educational um, uh, all the educational information that, that is uh, tidbits that tidbits that are there on break and plus our web our web links are there too our website links everything is there everything you want to know about us is there we'll see you for the balance of the show
James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censor pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Okay. Okay, we're back. Progressive discussions. New Year's Eve. 2016. Uh, the, yeah, the, the year ending show. It's New Year's Eve. Alright? You dig it? I was just discussing with uh, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman about uh, how, whether you call it apathy or just allowing your elected, so-called elected scoundrel leaders to do whatever they want, run roughshod, and just allow things to happen. It's like the passiveness of these imbeciles in America, the American voter, uh, who are voting in, really in a, in a rigged system because I think since the Industrial Revolution, capitalism has always been rigged for the rich. Um, 
It's like a homeowner who has a big doghouse in his backyard, like for a great thing, but he has no more dog. And he turns around and he advertises to rent his doghouse out to a homeless person, but he wants $700 a month rent. Ah. Now, the homeowner obviously is an asshole for doing it, but the sucker that pays the $700 a month rent for a doghouse, he's a bigger douchebag. So it's like Americans have to start learning how to boycott. I do it. I don't watch mainstream media anymore. Uh, therefore, I'm not exposed to uh, uh, corporate America's commercials. I don't buy corporate America's products. Um, I, I totally boycott mainstream media and, and their products. Hey, if everybody did that, it would have a massive effect. Um, but they don't do it. You know, everybody's in their own little private bubble world. Their click, their own click. Collectively, they don't boycott. Um, you only have you only have yourselves to blame if you bitch and moan and complain about the person, the governor you elected for four years. You do not re-elect the same governor. Like Wisconsin did it with Scott Walker, New Jersey did it with Chris Christie. Why on earth do you complain to high heavens and then re-elect? Uh, what about Mitch McConnell? Mitch McConnell in Kentucky, re-elected. Re Paul Ryan in Wisconsin, re-elected. You're re-electing the people you're complaining about, the people who have done nothing for you. Oh. Where's my crown? Hey. Well, I have to crown myself uh, more than once on this show for New Year's Eve. Make sure to do it right. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, you keep on shooting yourself in both feet. You can't be blaming other factors. All right, Chief. Let us continue with the balance of this holiday show. Seven lucky bells. Why did all of those economically anxious Trump voters reject policies that would have helped relieve their economic anxiety? What I was I just saying about shooting yourself in the foot? Maybe they believed any big government expansions would disproportionately go to the wrong kinds of people. That is, people unlike themselves. Hillary Clinton's unexpected loss particularly in traditionally blue strongholds, has led to lots of rumination about what the Democrats must do to reclaim their political territory. Smarter marketing, smoother organization, greater outreach, and fresher faces are among the most commonly cited remedies. But there seems to be universal agreement, at least among the Democratic politicians and strategists, that the party's actual ideas are the right ones. Democrats, they note, pushed for expansion of health insurance subsidies for low- and middle-income Americans investments in education and retraining, middle class tax cuts, and a higher minimum wage. These are core standard of living improvement policies. They would do far more to help the economically precarious, including and especially white working class voters, than Donald Trump's top heavy tax cuts and trade wars ever could. Here's the problem. These democratic policies 
probably would help the white working class. But the white working class doesn't seem to buy that. They are the ones who would really benefit. Across rural America, the Rust Belt, coal country, and other hotbeds of Trumpism, voters have repeatedly expressed frustration that the lazy and less deserving are getting a bigger chunk of government cheese. Oh yeah, they're getting a chunk, all right. Getting more like a like a tissue thin sliver. Chunk. In Kentucky. Consumers receiving federal subsidies through the Obamacare exchanges complain that neighbors who are less responsible are receiving nearly free insurance through Medicaid. Well, uh, less responsible, you mean, what do you mean, they're, 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 they're they, they, uh, they're mochers. They submitted a fraudulent claim for their, uh, for their welfare? I mean, uh, if you submit a claim and you're telling the truth, then you're not you're getting it legally. They can go to the emergency room for a headache, one woman told Vox's Sarah Cliff in Ohio. White working class focus group participants decried that women who pop out babies like Pez dispensers with different baby daddies get welfare every month. That reminds me of the old uh, Reagan days when they, they used to call them the, the welfare queens, right? And their housing paid for and their food. Well, I know one. I used to work with one young 20-something black girl who had just one little girl. One, one little girl. And she was... Um, she was that she had to go. She had to live in this uh, w woman's shelter oh. with the kid, and they got her a rent subsidy, Section Eight, for the uh, for a big, beautiful, remodeled apartment. <clears throat> big, just for one kid, and she got it right away. You know what I mean? So th there is some truth to the baby machines. You know, I mean, honestly, they should get. There should be a mandatory tubal ligation after, like, maybe two Whoa. kids. Two kids. These women seem to live large, one participant said, while people like herself are struggling to put food on the table. Yeah, I mean, that's cheating, though, getting welfare through by getting knocked up. There's no need for that. Participants in this focus group held by... What about the man? Where is his responsibility? Well, they, they chase him down for child support. If they get him. If they get him. Yeah. And How then, many people then, never get it? And then they got to give them the... Give the woman the... Uh, and then the, the, guy, the, the guy... The guy pays a percentage based on his income. Now, if, he, if he's... If he's uh, banging her and, and getting women pregnant and, and the guy makes minimum wage what are you going to get? What are you going to get? And then, then then she turns around and the taxpayers have to foot the bill for the rest. Yeah. For, for what? Having ha, Getting pregnant and deciding to have the baby have the baby you don't have to have the baby you know. That is a like a luxury Tell that to Bristol Palin. That's a luxury. Well, Bristol can afford to take care of him. That's now. a that's a luxury. Now what that about is them? that is not like a necessity, like a roof over the head and food on the table. Having babies is like uh, whether or not you can afford a big engagement ring, or whether or not you just go for the wedding band. Yeah, well, it's something that should be done in in marriage. That's where the best. Uh, yeah, but that's but, where the best ground to. But you don't you don't have truck. children if you don't have a pot to piss in. Yeah, you just don't do it, or you get you get yourself fixed. Participants in this focal group, held by the Institute for Family Studies were skeptical of all efforts to raise the minimum wage. 
Opponents argued either that higher pay wasn't justified for lower skilled, less intense work, or that raising the minimum wage would unfairly narrow the pay gap between diligent folks such as themselves and people who'd made worse life choices. Well, what do they consider higher pay? I hope they don't think $15 an hour is a high pay. They probably think less than that. The, yeah, that's not high pay. You got to look at the cost of living too. That son of a bitch is making $10 an hour. I've heard people, I've heard Trump pansies say that uh, $15 an hour for a fast food worker is too ridiculous much. and too much. Well, well, look at the cost of living. Do, do you, what about a landlord that wants $1,500 a month for some friggin' one bedroom apartment? You know what I mean? That's the area we live in right now go, here. Go after them. Go after the people who control the cost of living. I'm making thirteen dollars and thirteen cents. That's not. That's not a lot. I feel like expletive. I wonder what that expletive is. I feel like shit. Yeah, people are because afraid. he's making me almost as much. He's making almost as much as I am. And I've never been in trouble with the law. And I have a clean record. I can pass a drug test. Said one participant. Why does one person get almost 200 in food stamps and uh, somebody else who's less fortunate get uh, 30 bucks or, or 16 bucks a month or whatever? You know, that's not fair either. In Wisconsin. Oh, forget it. Rural whites are similarly eager to stop the flow of resources to people who are undeserving. I noticed the people in rural America seem to be the most right-wing zealot. Bingo. Zealots. Hey, Scott Garrett is from the bo uh, boonies of Sussex County, New Jersey, right? And if you talk to him long enough, you'll know that. They have, uh, <laughs> they have this uh, crazy Bible interpretation that... Um, crazy interpretation of the Bible. Interpretation. Not Bible interpretation, because the Bible does interpret itself. Well, their interpretation... It doesn't need you to interpret it. Their interpretation is one of uh, pointing fingers at anyone who gets help. Yeah. But, but if their farm was in trouble, they sure as hell would grab a, a subsidy for their farm. And their right-wing neighbors would pray for them. Oh yeah, that's what they do to right wing. Uh, when you when you need help, they say we'll pray for you. There you go. go to your local church for money. Yeah, go to your relatives. Go to your church. Yeah, that's that's like sweeping the the uh, the poor under the carpet. It's like you know, or you know, the homeless will go away if you ignore them. You know. The people interviewed for her book, Kramer's book, Catherine Kramer, often named a white. Wel welfare receiving neighbor or relative as someone who belonged in that basket of undeservings, but also immigrants, minorities, inner city elites who were allegedly siphoning off more government funds than they contributed. More broadly, a recent YouGov Huffington Post survey found that Trump voters are five times more likely to believe that average Americans have gotten less than they deserve in recent years than to believe that blacks have gotten less than they deserve. African Americans don't count as average Americans, apparently. None of this should be particularly surprising. We've known for a long time, through the work of Martin Gillens, Suzanne Matler, and other social scientists, that Americans, A, generally associate government spending with undeserving, non-working, non-white people. 
They had to throw that in there, huh? Non-white people? Yeah. And B. <laughs> are really bad at recognizing when they personally benefit from government programs. Oh, yeah, they're really living high on the hog. People on social services really are. And, uh, hey, they don't even want senior citizens to live on a fixed income either. Hence, those oblivious demands to keep your government hands off my Medicare and the Tea Partiers who get farm subsidies and the widespread opposition to expanded transfer payments in word if not in deed. Rhetoric this election cycle character caturing our government as rigged and anyone who pays into it as a chump has only reinforced these misconceptions about who benefits from government programs and how much. It's no wonder then that Democrats' emphasis on downwardly redistributive economic policies has been met with suspicion. Suspicion. Even from those who would be on the receiving end of such redistribution. That, that was not. It's Terry Stafford. Terry Stafford? Thank you. <laughs> and likewise, it's no wonder that Trump's promises to recreate millions of technologically displaced jobs and to punish all those non-self-sufficient moochers seem more enticing. No American likes the idea of getting a handout. Well, if the rich pay for it, I, I, have, no, uh, I have no remorse for, uh, for getting a handout. Especially if they believe that handout is secretly being rerouted to their layabout neighbor anyway. Rerouted. Yeah, you know what? Americans are such a, a selfish lot. I uh, mean, uh, they have theirs and they don't care about anyone else. Uh, uh, and and that, that's what it comes out to. And when they don't have theirs, and the other person has it, they, they don't cry, like they it. They cry, yeah. They don't like it. Everything is about me, 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 yeah. me, me. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi, hi. The get way of life. Yes. Not the give way of life. Suspicion. All right. It's one of the most popular government programs. A great system rooted in the fact that everyone plays a part. Everyone contributes and everyone benefits. Without it, 22.1 million more Americans would be poor. It keeps 345,000 New Jerseyans out of poverty. We're talking about one of the most successful anti-poverty programs our country has ever seen. We're mm. talking about Social Security. Republican. No. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go. Republicans in Congress have introduced legislation. The Social Security Reform Act. Reform, huh? To reform Social Security and expand extend the program solvency. Gotta lift the cap, man. This plan operates on the premise that the only way to extend the life of Social Security's finances is on the backs of seniors. Yeah, they just want they just want to bleed Social Security dry. They want to steal from it. Republicans. It's easy to throw stones at the ideas of others without offering any alternatives. Which why which is why I am proud Democrats have an alternative. One that extends the solvency of Social Security until twenty one hundred while increasing the benefits that seniors receive. 
I introduced this bill. The Social Security 2100 Act. With my friend, Representative John Larson, Democrat of Connecticut. Both the Social Security 2100 Act and the Social Security Reform Act, the Republican bill, have the same goal, to make Social Security solvent for 75 more years. Oh, i like to see, I like, I would love to see the uh, single payer universal health care and watch American health insurance companies go belly up. That, that's better than sex. But the methods used to achieve this goal represent two very different visions about how the government should keep its promise to seniors and other Americans who rightfully expect these benefits to be there for them when they retire. I know that too many seniors in New Jersey and across the country are barely scraping by with Social Security benefits. That are not reflective of their true costs. I believe we need to increase seniors' benefits, not cut them. Our plan would immediately provide an across-the-board 2% increase for all new and current beneficiaries. That's not a lot. 2%? What? 2%, it's not a lot. Hell no! Despite non-existent or anemic cost of living adjustments over the past few years, we know that seniors' costs for housing, food, health care, and other necessities have been rising. So you don't have to be an economist to figure out that the formula we are using to determine the COLA just is not accurate. That is why the Democratic plan would tie the COLA to a more accurate formula. The Consumer Price Index for the Elderly, or CPI-E. This readjustment to Social Security is reasonable and affordable. Remember, this is an insurance plan, not an entitlement. The Republican plan would raise Social Security's full retirement age from 67 to 69. This is a benefit cut, pure and simple. According to the Center for Budget and Policy Priorities, a one-year increase in the full retirement age is equivalent to roughly a 7% cut in monthly benefits for all retirees who are affected. Additionally, tying the COLA to chained CPI as the Republican plan proposes would, compound, would result in lower benefit increases that would compound over time. This approach only makes the current problem of covering seniors' true costs even worse. On top of this, single retirees with retirement incomes above 85000 and couples above 170000 would not receive a COLA. While the Republican plan would provide a modest benefit increase to individuals who had an average annual income of about 22000 Everyone else would see benefit cuts. 
ranging from 17% to 43% by 2080. Social Security is about seniors and non-seniors alike. While the Republican plan relies exclusively on benefit cuts, raising the eligibility age to extend the life of Social Security, the Democratic plan shores up the program by ensuring that millionaires and billionaires pay their fair share. Currently, payroll taxes are not collected on wages over $117,000. This proposal would apply the payroll tax to wages over $400,000. With a 2% benefit credit, it would also gradually phase in an increase in the contribution rate. The average worker would pay an additional 50 cents per week every year. A monthly cost equal to one medium coffee from Dunkin' Donuts to keep the system solid. This plan has the backing of advocacy groups like Social Security Works and the National Committee to Preserve Social Security. I get frustrated by all the talk in Washington about Social Security going bankrupt and not being around for future generations. This is simply a scare tactic used by those who want to make negative changes, like those outlined in the plan put forth by the Republicans. Get their greedy, selfish, evil agenda. By passing the Social Security 2100 Act, we can extend the life of Social Security while protecting seniors, improving their benefits. Democrats and Republicans made necessary and reasonable changes to Social Security in the past. Compromise brought the parties together for the greater good. The common good bill, that's Frail Jr. Democrats, New Jersey. Here we go again with that bipartisanship, bring the parties together, type dream. Oh gosh, okay. it, 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 that, that, that's typical establishment. Uh, well, the right wing have always had this war against the poor, always. They're relentless. You notice they have a lot of private meetings being obsessed with oh, the God, poor yeah. getting help. They seem to be very obsessed with, um, number one, stealing other countries' oil, occupying their oil-rich land, and number two, obsessed with the poor getting help. They seem to be two obsessions. Of course, the child in the womb is another huge obsession of the right wing. Not, not the, the baby already born. It's you got to stay in the womb for them to fight like hell for you. you know, once you're born, you're a moocher. Oh, yeah. You know, unless you're, you're born with a silver spoon in your mouth, then, of course, you're not a moocher because you're a rich kid. That's it, right? How are we doing on time? That's it. Do one more if you want. <laughs> Small uh, one. Okay, one more. I would like to commend the Reverend Ninyon Cho. Ninyon Cho. I like the, I like the shillelagh, this furnace of yours. And the Congregation of St. Michael's Church in Palisades Park, New Jersey, for offering shelter to the homeless men who needed to be off the street and safe from the cold temperatures. I salute you, sir. There are many reasons people are homeless, but setting judgment aside, Father Cho reached out from his faith-based beliefs 
and acted in, acted in accord with the teachings of Jesus. Those teachings tell us that we need to meet the basic needs of people for food, clothing, shelter, and the like. And sometimes doing that puts us at odds with civil rules and regulations. I hope that borough officials will work with Father Cho and not put up obstacles that will be too hard to overcome so that St. Michael's can continue the social action work that the church believes in. Well, I want to dedicate today's holiday show, New Year's Eve show, to Father Cho. I'm not trying to rhyme, Joe, it's coincidental. Dedicate this show to Father Cho of Richfield Park, New Jersey. Palisade. What was the church? Palisades, St. Michael's. Palisades Park? I'm sorry. Father Cho of Palisades Park, St. Michael's, um, Roman Catholic Church? I guess so. I guess so. Oh, St. Michael's wow. Church of Palisades Park, New Jersey. I dedicate this show to Father Cho. And uh, let me tell you something. If politicians, considering the borough officials, if politicians did their job as public servants, uh, we wouldn't have homeless people on the streets freezing to death or freezing period. That's all I have to say. Uh, think about that. Uh, thank you for having us, taking the time to watch the show. Please get a designated driver or stay overnight if you're going out for New Year's Eve I'll Uber. Uh, to a, a, a restaurant or catering hall. If there's a nearby hotel, stay overnight if you, if you don't have a designated driver. Chances are everyone wants to drink. So there won't be a designated driver. So um, have somebody pick you up. Uber. Or yeah, take a cab, take a Uber, or stay overnight, but don't drink and drive. And have a good one, right? Have a safe one. But we're going to need all the the divine help good. we can for this new year. Believe me, we're we're in deep shit. 2017. In the end times, we'll see it. Old Lang Syne, whatever the fuck that means. Say Happy New Year to the people. Happy New Year, people. Happy New Year. I guess the people in Asia will be celebrating it five hours ahead of us. Yeah, somebody has already, I believe. Because uh, they are, in that region, they're 12 to 13 hours. Now, what am I saying? Five hours. Well, how stupid no, I am. Yeah. They're 12 to five hours is Europe. Uh, Asia, you know, near the coast, Japan, uh, Philippines, Indonesia, Asia, China, along the coast, they're 12 to 13 hours ahead of us. Yeah, well. So they probably already. Okay, well, Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's to you, to everybody, yeah. sooner or later. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.